SketchUp for iPad is a custom version of SketchUp that offers a ton of different input methods, and it actually has a number of new features that we haven't seen in any other version of SketchUp. So in this video, I'd like to give you my review of SketchUp for iPad and tell you why it's actually exceeded my expectations. So when I first heard that they were developing a version of SketchUp for iPad, I was honestly thinking like, why? Why do we need this? Like, just make layout better, please. But they actually invited me onto the beta team, and it wasn't until I got my hands on it where it finally clicked, and I actually kind of like it. Now, I'm gonna tell you why, but first, I wanna make sure you understand, we've actually had a free SketchUp mobile app uh, viewer for many years now. So you can download this mobile viewer on Android or iOS devices, you know, cell phone, iPad, whatever. And it's awesome. You know, you can you can navigate around, you can view scenes and, and activate styles and things like that. It's great for viewing the model, but it doesn't have any modeling tools. But you gotta ask, like, why do we need another version of SketchUp for the iPad? And is it worth paying a SketchUp subscription fee in order to access it? Like, are we really out and about thinking like, man, I really wish I could be 3D modeling right now. But it's like, seriously, like, how can you really be as efficient tapping on an iPad versus, you know, having a three button mouse and keyboard shortcuts right at your fingertips? Well, you actually might be surprised. So let me show you how this works. So the first thing you'll notice about this interface is it looks very similar to SketchUp for web. So it has the same icons. You got your tools on the left, your different panels and whatnot on the right. So let's go ahead and make a cube so I can show you how uh, intuitive this is. So I'll just click and drag a rectangle, grab the push pull tool and extrude it up. But let's say we wanted to model with more precision. So I'm gonna use two fingers to just tap to undo. We'll grab the rectangle tool again. I'll click and drag, but notice the dimensions that are shown here at the cursor. It kind of follows you around. Well, if you tap on this, it'll allow you to input uh, accurate dimensions. So we'll go eight foot comma 10 foot. Enter and the rectangle will resize accordingly. And you'll get that same input uh, dimension input with the push pull tool as well. So let's say we go six feet, enter. And so that's how you can kind of match the same sort of speed on PC on the iPad. Now, navigation is really easy. You just use your fingers. So one finger to orbit the camera, two fingers to pan or you know pinch to zoom. You can kind of like pan and zoom at the same time. So I think that's really intuitive and it's pretty easy to kind of jump back and forth between using the pen input and jumping to uh, navigate at the same time. Now, one of my big concerns with uh, modeling on the iPad was like how to do inferencing because, you know, on, on the PC, you've got your arrow keys that you can use to lock inferences, but they have uh, that solved pretty well, in my opinion. So anytime you have a tool that can use an, a linear inference, you'll see the buttons right here. And this kind of shows you all of the kind of modifier keys for tools as well. So if I'm drawing a line and I want it to be locked along axis while inferencing another point in the model, I can just lock the green axis, for example, and then kind of move the cursor over to lock to something else. And um, that works really well. So you can use that for, for moving as well. So if I have this selection and then I grab the move tool and want to move this along the green axis uh, and snap it there, that works really well. But one thing that's tricky if you're using the default just draw mode with the pen is let's say you wanted to uh, start an edge from this midpoint. There's no way to see the inference point before clicking. So you kind of have to just take a guess and hope you're, you know, hitting that that inference point. Um, but there's actually a solution for that, and all that is is to use a the different drawing mode called click move click. So this is a really cool input method for the pen because it allows you to drag a cursor around without actually 
clicking first. So you can drag the mouse around until you find that inference point, and then you just press harder, and you see that little pop on the screen to indicate that you've clicked, essentially. That might not be the right term, but you know what I mean. And so once you find the point you want to snap to, you just press harder and you get the little pop and it clicks. And I think this is a great way to take field dimensions. So let's say you're, you know, on a job site and just being able to lift the pen off the screen, you can put the iPad down, grab your tape measure, take a measurement, come back here and type that measurement in. You can continue modeling, go take another measurement and type that in as well. So I think the click, move, click is a, a great compromise uh, for, you know, being on the desktop and having a cursor that you can visually kind of snap to different inferences without actually, um, you know, clicking on that inference. But one of the coolest things about SketchUp for iPad is you can use a number of different input methods. So I've shown you the two input methods with the pen, but you can also simply use your finger. So you know the finger, uh, you know, the touch input is uh, used for navigation, but you can also long press to use any tool. Now it is a little tricky to snap to different points in the model because you have your finger in the way, um, but just know it is it is a a method uh, for input. So accidentally tapped there. So long press to start a rectangle, long press to finish, and then grab the push pull tool, long press, pull it up, and there you go. Um, you can also connect a three button mouse to uh, the iPad, either with Bluetooth or USB cable. Or if you have the magic keyboard, you can use a trackpad for input as well. And that will give you the cursor on screen, which is handy. So once you get used to the new input methods, it really does feel like SketchUp. It doesn't feel like, you know, a shoehorned version of SketchUp forced to work on the iPad. It feels natural and intuitive, just like you're used to with SketchUp on the desktop. Now, if you're a SketchUp Pro user, you're not gonna be able to use your extensions on the iPad because there's no Ruby API, just like SketchUp for web. There's also a few other things missing like the outliner, but it does have a couple of new features you won't find on SketchUp for web. So the first one I'm gonna show you is auto shape, which is right here. And this one allows you to use kind of these uh, rough sketch shapes to create kind of common uh, shapes in SketchUp. So let's say you just want to create a rectangle. You just kind of sketch it out and a rectangle is created. You can also create a cube by going like this and then drawing a line up and that creates a cube. And there's even a uh, cool feature where it'll create a live component for you. So let's say I wanted to add a window here. I can grab the auto shape tool, can draw a window like this and it'll convert it to a live component. It just takes a minute. The next feature that's really cool is the markup tool. So that is found right here. And so with the markup tool, you kind of orbit to a certain view that you want and you get all of the iPad uh, tools right here and you can kind of draw on the screen and make markups. I'm, I'm terrible at at drawing here at this angle. So you can you can make markups on the model and when you click done, it'll save that to a scene. So you can orbit away from it. Um, and then if you wanna bring those, those markups back, you can just activate the scene and the markups will appear. Now, a newer feature that they actually added to uh, SketchUp for iPad is you can select a face tap these three dots right here and tap this button and it'll embed the markups into a material applied to the face. And so now you can orbit around and those markups will be uh, retained directly on the face material. So that's really cool. The final feature I wanna uh, tell you about is the view in AR mode. So if I go here and click view in AR, I can actually view the model in augmented reality on my table, uh, which is kind of neat as well. 
So overall, I think this is a great mobile 3D modeling platform and it has a lot of excellent use cases like taking field dimensions, marking up a model on the job site, you know, showing clients and making changes on the fly. But at the same time, I don't think it meets the same speed and efficiency of using SketchUp on a desktop. But you know, that's not really the point. So if you wanna check out SketchUp for iPad, you can download a seven day free trial and then you need to get at least a SketchUp Go subscription, which is like 120 bucks a year, but it's also included with SketchUp Pro and SketchUp Studio as well. And if this is your first time on my channel, my name's Matt Donnelly, and I'm a SketchUp teacher and author. And if you're a SketchUp Pro user, you should check out my book, SketchUp to Layout. You'll learn everything you need to know about 3D modeling in SketchUp Pro, and you'll learn how to create beautiful construction documents in layout. So just go to sketchuptolayout.com, and you can use coupon code 10 off to save 10%. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.